this video, we're going to take a look at using LiveAmp to do quick capture and analysis of the audio path inputs and outputs of a head unit from the bench. If you haven't watched the video for connecting LiveAmp to the target, you might want to do that first. Otherwise, the assumption here is that you already know how. So the main page in LiveAmp is called the big picture. This gives us a general overview of the modules that are enabled on our target. The light blue indicates that the module exists on the target but is currently inactive or idle. Uh, if the rectangle is dark, that shows us that the module does not exist on the target in its current configuration. With QNX AMP, all modules can be enabled, but for now, let's focus uh, just on voice. So, one of the first things that I would want to do when testing the current state of the audio system on the head unit is to actually listen to the inputs and outputs. Uh, I have here a hands-free microphone that I've hooked up to my target, as well as a desktop loudspeaker for the output. So input, I have a microphone, output, loudspeaker. Uh, how do we get audio flowing? Well, one way to do it is to actually pair a phone to the target and make a hands-free phone call. This will activate the voice library and get audio flowing. But for this demonstration, we're going to take a look at manually starting the voice library. So in the big picture, if you have LiveAmp 3.1 or greater, you have this handy feature here, which is open terminal. I click on that and I get a terminal window to my target. So we've already connected and uh, to our J6 QNX car target. LiveAmp remembers the IP address and the terminal window uh, goes right to it, SSH connection. So I just type in AFM underscore CTL space dash A voice enter and immediately you see we have level meters uh, which is a great sign and also the voice library is now illuminated by this uh, white rectangle so that also shows us that the voice library is now active so level meters uh, are great they give us the the signal level in amplitude of the mic and it looks like we, we have some good signal level. If we want to take a look at the frequency content, we can open up this frequency viewer down here. Uh, I already have my microphone selected to, to be streaming, but you can right click and uh, voice. It shows us the library is active. You can select or deselect. Uh, I want my microphone in to be on. And if I pull this a bit bigger, uh, I'll just get quiet for a second so we can take a look at the noise floor of our microphone. So it looks pretty good to me. Uh, we have a little bit of a, a lump down here at 60 hertz. This is super common, uh, especially in North America where our wall power is uh, 120 volts AC uh, at 60 hertz. So I have all my equipment here plugged into the wall. It's uh, it's really common to see a, a spike down at 60. I imagine that goes away somewhat when everything gets put in the car and taken off the wall power. So I'm not too concerned about that. Otherwise, the signal looks really good. The noise is down here at minus 100 dB. Uh, and I'm not seeing any other strong tonal components. If, if in your system you open this up and you see something like this, or mm, well that is a pretty good indication that there is noise on your microphone and you should probably dig into that and try and diagnose where that noise is coming from uh it could be an, an electrical source uh something wrong there but good to, to try and figure that out before going too much further with the system that could really impact the performance of the the hands-free call so we, we drop that down. So that's a good way to visualize the the microphone signal and to, to quickly inspect it visually. But if we want to actually listen to the signal, then we can go to the voice library here. We have these targets, one on the left and one on the right. These offer tap points uh, to the audio streams. And the left side targets are all of the audio streams before they come into the voice library. So the raw microphone, for instance. And the target point on the right side is the post-processed signal. So after the processing of the voice library, you can listen to the signal at that point too. Uh, right now, what I want to do is I want to listen to the microphone signal. So if I have a set of headphones, uh, I just plug my headphones into my laptop, and I can actually listen to the microphone signal in real time. So I do that now. I put on my headphones. 
Uh, I come over here and I listen to my mic in signal. And, and what I'll do, what I'll do is, I'll is I'll just silence my, my, uh, my studio, uh, my studio mic, here mic here so we can, so we hear, can just hear just the, the DUT, DUT microphone. microphone. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. Little mic scratch. Just so we know that's the right one. Okay, and we will and bring back my my studio mic here. So that's just a way that you can, in real time, listen to any of the input channels to the library. Um, it's a good way to, if you're in the car, if, especially in a multi-channel system, if you want to scratch different microphones, make sure that they're going to the channels that you expect they're going to. Uh, and also, you can usually hear electrical noise or, or other things just in real time. Uh, you can take the microphone out. You can you can try and diagnose it just by listening with your your headphones to your window sound card. Super super handy. Now, if I want to do a recording, I go back to the same place, and the very next option is record. So let's choose that. Let's choose mic in, and you can see that in our record actions list here, uh, voice mic in comes in. This is another way you can actually select record by right clicking in here. You can do the, for, the same thing for listening, uh, but we have a record action already set up, voice mic in. So we wanna come down to our record button. We hit record and I'm just gonna do a quick a couple of sentences, glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. These days a chicken leg is a rare dish. Okay, I see I have 11 seconds of recording now, which is great. I will go and find it. LiveAmp automatically puts the recordings in the LiveAmp folder. Here's my LiveAmp executable, and I want to go into audio stream. It puts a little uh, time date stamp at the end of the folder, and uh, I can open up my, my file that I just recorded. So we like to use Audition here. Um, you might have a different audio software for listening to the files. You could just play it in whatever is available on Windows as well if you just need to listen to it that way. Um, but another way of listening to it is by actually playing it back through LiveAmp. So if I come back to the target here and I go to Playback, then I can select my Receive In and load the file that I just recorded. And I think it's this one here. And now you can see in playback actions, I have a receive in tap point selected with the voice recording that I just made. Now it's gonna be the same sample rate, uh, which is great. We're at 16K currently. Um, and if I hit the playback button, I should hear it through my loudspeaker as this is the receive path. So you can see that the the level meters came up there. You can um, you can view that in the frequency viewer as well, um, and it's just a good way to to listen to the actual output of your system through a loudspeaker. Um, you can do all sorts of all sorts of cool stuff with just the capture and playback uh, functionality there. So. We had listen, record, playback, level meters, and frequency spectrum.